Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Politics and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. So today what I figured we'd do to start our new year off right would be to talk about everything else except clothes. So we're going to cover some different fragrances, different uh, headwear, uh, different neckwear. We're going to even cover things for the home. Ralph Lauren Home is a pretty big part of the brand and the lifestyle as well. And I do have a few items from uh, the Ralph Lauren Home brand, so we'll cover a few of those too. Just going to have some fun with it, go through some things, maybe educate you on some of the accessories and or all the other things that the world of Ralph Lauren offers. All right, so let's get right into it. So first we'll cover headwear, all right? So this piece here, as you can tell by the design, is more of one of the uh, Sherlock Holmes types of hats. I'm not even sure what these hats are called. I ain't gonna lie to you, didn't even bother to look it up. But it's got a bucket style to it, like your traditional bucket cap. But this is more of a Sherlock Holmes style, detective style hat. I like it. It's a cool piece. I paid a, I paid a, uh, I got a good deal on it. I'll say from one of the, uh, the uh, online shops, eBay, Poshmark, one of them. But um, yeah, I've had it for a while, and it matches up great with some of my tweed blazers. But yeah, this is a pretty good piece. Then we have uh, a cabbie. This is Polo brand. Um, it's got the herringbone pattern on it. It's wool. It's, it's got the uh, hairy feel to it. This is uh, also one of my favorite pieces. It's really wide. It's really wide on my head. So it gives my, because my head ain't small. So it makes it makes my head look well proportional when I put that on. This is also a driving cap or a cabbie. Um, it's almost like a tam. I wouldn't say it's quite a tam because the button is a little smaller than most tams. And it's not quite as wide but it does have that tan feel to it. This is also Polo brand. Uh, it's gray, hair and blow. It's more, it probably, I get you, I bet you when this was on sale um, back in the day, it probably was listed as black, but it's more of a gray, a charcoal gray with white specks in it. And like I said, it's got a herringbone pattern on it. Real cool piece, I wear that often. The next two pieces are rugby. This is a rugby patchwork uh, herringbone twill. This is uh yeah, this is uh this is a must have for any any gentleman that uh, appreciates that English countryside look. You gotta have a patchwork, whether it be rugby or the polo, uh, the polo blue label brand, either one. Um, you can find these all day long on eBay. I've seen them, I've seen them all the time. But I will tell you, most people know what they have, so you might pay a hundred bucks for it, but it's worth it. It's something you definitely gotta have in your collection if you're a collector and you love the English style of Ralph Lauren. This is also rugby. This is probably my go-to. I probably wear this one more than any any of my uh, estate driving caps, cabbies, newsboys, whatever you wanna call them. Um, this is, like I said, this is also rugby. It's got a, a vintage herringbone pattern to it. It, um, sorry. It has the uh, herringbone, I mean the uh, tweed buckle on the back, not a leather buckle like the other one, but yeah, this is this is one of my go-tos. I love the way it fits. It, it, it complements the shape of my head perfectly. This is one of three double RL pieces of headwear that I have. This is more of a, it's a driving cap, but it's more of like an engineer's cap almost. It's um. It has a low rise to it. It fits high up on the head, leather strap on the back, but it's, it's very complimentary to the shape of my head also. And last but not least, I wanted to uh, pull this one out. This is not one of my favorite pieces of headwear. And the reason being is because it's very flimsy. It doesn't have that sturdy feel to it. Now it fits my head pretty decent once I put it on. But And I do like the suede brim of this driver. However, uh, for whatever reason, the brand switched to these and you can only get a sturdier cabbie in the double RL brand. 
everything else in Blue Label always ends up being this flimsy material, and I freaking hate it. So um, anytime I'm in the market for a driver, cabby, newsboy, whatever, whenever I'm in the market, I go. I don't even go to the website anymore. I go straight to Poshmark or eBay or Grilled or any of those websites to try to find something a little more vintage because I hate this flimsy material. Last but certainly not least as far as headwear is concerned, of course, the ball caps. I think nowadays they call them the dad caps, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter to me, but the ball caps is also something that I keep in uh, supply. To be honest, the last time I counted, I had over 60 of them. Um, but this one will probably be, if I threw on a, if I threw on a ball cap today with today's ensemble, this will probably be the one I throw on. It's a rugby piece. Fits pretty good. It's got a flex fit in it, so fit my big head. But this one and then this rugby cap here are two of my favorites. That's why they're always on display. But, you know, you got to have a dad cap or a ball cap in your collection. You know, at least a couple. Uh, tra the, tra the traditional ones, the Chino ones with the pony on it is, are always go-to items. But, you know, you can do, do your leg work, do your due diligence, and find other ball caps you might like too, like this rugby. So, headwear is, I wouldn't say it's necessary a must-have, but just, just to have that versatility in your collection, you want to have a few pieces to go on the, on the dome, you know? So, full disclosure, I am a neckwear fanatic. Big surprise, right? If you've been watching the episodes, you already know that. I have over 260 neckties the actual count is 263 i have 263 neckties and i have about 20 bow ties and then i have another six ascots so uh my my neckwear collection is pretty impressive to me that being said i pulled out some of my favorites not necessarily my go-to like i don't wear them that often but these are definitely some of my absolute favorites uh, got a rugby tie here. It's knitted. It's a club tie. It's wine and navy with the skull and bones uh, for o-ring down at the bottom. Um, I got this tie. I found this tie. I was searching for something in a uh, wine and navy when I first got the wine and navy shawl cardigan. The one everybody calls the Harry Potter. Looks like it has the big Hogwarts logo on the left. That was one of the grail pieces that I searched for. And it's funny because when I work, first started working for the company, that particular sweater was in our location. It had just hit our location when I started. And I thought it was hideous. And by the time I decided that I liked it and wanted it, it was gone. So it took me about four years to finally track one down. I have one, and then I was lucky enough a couple of weeks after that I tracked down this tie, and it, it, they coordinate very well together. But this rugby club tie here, I have another rugby tie that has the all-over kicker man on it. It's a pink tie. I, you know, lighting's never all that good in this room, unfortunately. But it's a, it's a, it has the all-over kicker man on it. Um, on a pink background so I don't wear this that often but it is definitely one of my favorite ties because it's rare uh, let's see definite go-to tie definitely a tie that most gentlemen have in their collection especially if you consider yourself ivy or trad then of course you have a navy and gold rep striped tie and this is mine I also have one that's navy with smaller uh, gold stripes also but this is this is a go-to got to have that in your collection this tie was uh, heralded by me I saw this tie online and I didn't even wait for sale anything like that I just went ahead and grabbed it because I said yeah gotta have it it's a patchwork tie and the patches are, are all of the foul yard variety so each patch has foul yard patterns on it. Man, this tie is awesome. And of course, I have plenty of heraldic 
neckties. I keep those because of my Ivy and Tread uh, obsession. This one is one of the newer ones I got. It's uh, Kelly Green with purple stripes and then it has the, uh, the crest all over it. Love that tie. Bow tie wise, that's a must have, that color combo. Red, forest green, French navy, yellow. This is a rugby tie. It's green it, and it has a very subtle herringbone pattern in it. But it's a college green and it has crests on it. That's a great tie. Rugby, like I said. This tie was, I thought, was fairly unique. It has the all, all over polo player on it. It's the Oxford polo player, which mean, basically means it's the one that's colored. Not a singular color, but the man's shirt is a different color. The horse is brown or tan or whatever. Whenever you see that, that's called an Oxford pony polo player. But I like the way the tie is constructed. It's squared off at the bottom. So once I tie, once I tie this on, it has a really great look to it. I wear this with uh, I wear this a lot of times whenever I'm wearing something that's percolated. And last but certainly certainly not least, I have a black watch wool bow tie. And uh, this black watch is so dark that, you know, you have to kind of get up close to see that it's a black watch. But once you, once you peep it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fantastic looking tie. So that's just a few of the numerous pieces of neckwear that I own. Um, but for a guy like me that loves Ivy, that loves trad, that loves to dress up, typically dressed down items, Neckties and bow ties are a must just to just to put that extra little finishing touch on an ensemble for me. Um, if you work corporate America or if you just like to wear neckties and bow ties all the time, then I love to hear about your collection of uh, neckties and bow ties, especially if they route one. They not route one. I ain't interested. <laughs> so I'm the type of person. I'm the type of man. I don't. I don't like having things in my pockets. Um, cash is the only thing I like to have in my pocket, and I don't even carry a lot of cash nowadays. Um, I don't like having my phone in my pocket. I don't like keys in my pocket, business card holder, none of that. Um, and I also write, so I keep uh, several notebooks on me whenever I'm stepping out. So uh, I purchased my first messenger bag maybe eight, nine years ago and kind of got addicted to the bag. So um, now at this point I have 23 bags, um, anywhere, anything from Blue Label to Double RL um, and Rugby, of course. I don't think, I, I, no, I do own one Purple Label bag also. Um, and it, I think online it's just Ralph Warren, but it, it's, it's Purple Label, but anyway, this is one of my one of my more recent bag purchases. It's a bowling ball bag. Polo Athletic Department, of course. I'm a big kid at heart, so I wrote all my information here. But uh, yeah, I got a bowling ball bag in the college green with the navy, the you know the classic navy and yellow combo going down the middle. Very roomy bag. It's very roomy. Has a lot of room to it. It has a strap to it that's navy and white. It's a cool strap, but. I wouldn't use a strap for a bowling ball bag. I'd rather carry it with the handles, but that's a uh, blue label. I have this rugby messenger bag. This will be, be the bag I probably would have used today with this ensemble. Now I did go out today, but I didn't, I didn't really have a use for a bag, but this would have been the bag that I would have used today. It's got the, uh, the Griffin on it. It's, a uh, a very rustic navy in in complexion like this this bag has a lot of character it's it, it's been through a lot and that's how i kind of like some of my bags it's fairly roomy for a messenger bag also but there's that there's that rugby bag i have this hand tooled briefcase by double rl when i saw this online i jumped on it i just thought it was a really a really cool classy piece that would go well with a suit Give your entire ensemble just a little, just a little touch of charisma. Um, Double RL, as you know, is going to be great leather. Um, there's a decent amount of room in here, but it's a briefcase. You know, I could throw my keys in here, 
and a couple of notebooks, my phone, my tablet, and I'm good to go. But that's Double RL. This is Ralph Lauren Collection. It's a leather bag. This bag, I've had this bag for a while. It's been through a lot. The leather is starting to look a little aged on one side, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. But I saw this bag and I thought a leather tote would be really cool. It's got the uh, the the it's got the leather piece for the suitcase tag here for the uh, you know for trips or whatever. Good carry on bag at the airport. But I've had this bag a long time and I and I do use this bag a lot. I also have this bag, this rustic beauty here. I cop this in in D.C. in particular Georgetown. I uh, went to the Ralph Lauren store there and the entire store was 40% off. And then I was an employee at the time, so I got 50% off. So I got this $400 bag for like maybe 65 bucks or something. But it's oil cloth, very, uh, very utilitarian, very outdoorsy. Two big pockets here, very roomy on the inside. This bag can fill up and go you know north and south so it, it, it gets to where it's very roomy on the inside you can get a lot of stuff in here and it has a pocket on the back also shoulder strap handles i use both so that's why the strap is still on here great bag and then last but not least probably my best purchase is i found this vintage ralph lauren suitcase at a goodwill for four dollars I almost cried when I saw this in the Goodwill. I thought, man, this has got to be my lucky day. But, um, and it wasn't even one of those Goodwills. You know, a lot of times with thrifting, the, the neighborhood dictates what type of pieces you might find in that particular Goodwill. So the surrounding neighborhood, like if you go to, I'm in North Carolina. So if you go up to Mooresville, to their, the Goodwills up there, you're getting a lot of pieces that come from people who live on Lake Norman. Well, if you live on Lake Norman, you got some money. So those pieces, you, you know, I tend to be able to find more Ralph as far as apparel in those particular Goodwills. Now the particular Goodwill I found this, it's, you know, average neighborhood, working class neighborhood. So I wasn't expecting much. I just was kind of going in there on the humbug just to sightsee and found this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful suitcase. Man, I done carried this to work. I done carried this in the street. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't flying nowhere and still carry it and still get compliments. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of leather. Um, I'm not sure how old it is, what year it came out. I don't know anything about it other than it was Ralph Lauren and it was $5, I think, $4, something like that. But this was by far probably my best through the find ever. So, and I, I have a few other bags, but just wanted to show y'all a few of them. And now we're gonna get to the meat. We're gonna get to the fragrances. Let's go. All right, so I'm big on fragrances. Um, and Tom Ford makes a great fragrance. Uh, Gucci always comes out with great fragrances. I'm a Ralph Lauren guy. I don't wear any fragrance but Ralph Lauren. Now, do I like every Ralph Lauren fragrance that I've ever smelled? You goddamn right I do. Um, it may be an age thing. I don't want to deep dive into that. But all those hating on Polo Green, man, whatever. Polo Green, when worn in moderation, because it's one of the strongest fragrances out there. But Polo Polo Green worn in moderation is, man, listen, Polo Green is it's still that deep. Funny thing is, is I'm out and I haven't bought any more. But I haven't bought, actually haven't bought fragrances in a while because I have so many. I have three of the four Polo Reds, so I have Polo Red, Polo Red Intense, Polo Red Extreme. I never did purchase Red Rush. Um, I'm a fan of Red Rush, but I'm not a huge fan, so I get it when I run into it and got a few dollars to spare, then I get Red Rush. Uh, keep some Polo Blue. I have Polo Black, Polo Double Black. I keep those on deck. Um, I, I even have from the Ralph Lawrence fragrance. One, two, three, and four, the Big Pony fragrances. I still have one and three left, and I have the four body spray. I use them in moderation because it's a discontinued line. And I kind of like one, two, three, and four, actually. Um, but my favorites and my go-tos are, 
as follows. First, the big daddy, Purple Label, Ralph Lauren Purple Label. It's a beautiful display. Top comes off, door opens, and there you have Ralph Lauren Purple Label. Um, purple Label to me, signif it, it, smell, it, it actually smells like what you would think Purple Label smells like. It smells like a high-end uh, uh, a high end man. It smells like it definitely is a manly fragrance, but it smells high end. It smells high dollar. It smells like corporate. It smells like Wall Street. It smells like uh, money. It smells like a man with money. Um, Purple Label has a sweet notes in it, but it also has woodsy notes in it. Not a lot. It's not a lot of woodsy notes in it, but definitely has sweet notes in it. Then there is Ralph Lauren Safari, which at first, the first time I smelled Safari, I didn't like it, but it grew on me. To me, it's not a strong fragrance as far as uh, being able to smell it for yourself, but it does last. And I guess it depends on your, your pheromones and all that good stuff, your body temperature and all that good stuff. But one thing about the display is it's amazing with the... Uh, the uh, English crest style on the on the front of it here, but Safari is it's it's definitely a prominent. It has a prominent uh, tone to it. Some woodsy notes in it as well. Uh, some sweet notes in it as well. But uh, Safari is definitely that's definitely a grown man also. Now, one of my favorites, one of my go tos, and I'm getting low on it too. Is Supreme Ode. Now, Ode is a type of wood, so of course, this has a woodsy smell to it. But man, I'm here to tell you, gentlemen, Supreme Ode, for one, when I use it, I use it sparingly because it's, it's strong and it lasts all day. But I've never not worn Supreme Ode and not got compliments or been asked, what is that you're wearing when I wear this? Um, I even, I even only use this for certain types of outfits, like, like my, my laid back Ivy trad ensemble today, wouldn't use old. I actually wouldn't use purple label or safari. I'd probably use red or blue, but I definitely wouldn't use old. I throw old on if I had on a suit. I throw old on if I had on something real outdoorsy or utilitarian, something of that nature. So like when I get these duck boots, Ode might get used a little more often than it has been used in the past couple months because like I said, I use it sparingly, but it's my favorite. Um, I still have yet to get Supreme Leather. One of my partners has it and he says it's an amazing fragrance. But if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Supreme Leather was never in the stores. It was available online, but it was never in the stores, in the Ralph Lauren stores, but it came out right around the time of Supreme Ode. But uh, yeah, these are my three favorite go-to go fragrances. So what I would suggest as far as fragrances, if, you, if you're if you a gentleman who isn't big on fragrance, but you wanna get into it, to do the legwork, what I would do is I would go to department stores like Macy's or Dillard's or Nordstrom's or Saks or something of that nature and go to their fragrance department and check out a few of the Ralph Lauren fragrances and try them on. Take, take your wife, your girlfriend, your mistress, your better half, whatever, take her with you and let her smell them as you spray them on. Now listen, quick tutorial. Don't rub any, per, uh, any fragrance in. You don't rub it in. Let it sink in naturally. That way it'll last longer. Get yourself here behind the ear. I usually do two on each side. If I, today, since I'm not wearing a necktie, I hit myself here. If I'm wearing a button down shirt or a knit polo and it's open, then I spray in there. If I'm wearing a necktie or bow tie, I don't worry about getting here. But here and here, there are premium spots and then the wrist. Either side, both sides, but when you spray it on, don't rub it in. Let it, let it seep into your pores and your skin naturally, and that fragrance will, will last longer and, and be more prominent. Rubbing it in, uh, it doesn't last as long. 
But I would go to, like I said, I would go to some of the department stores and try on different fragrances. Try them on you. Spray them on the stick so you can smell what it smells like. But all of us are different. So it's, it may smell slightly different on you than it does on me. So spray it on your wrist and walk around. Go to, walk from, walk from, go into Dillard's, spray some on your wrist and spray a different one on this wrist and then walk all the way to Mason's and then spray it, spray something else on this side and, and just kind of get a feel of what it smells like on you with your skin and, and, and your pores and all that good shit. You know what I mean? But yeah, fragrances, gentlemen, we got to have them. We love them. Most of us do. I don't, I don't know too many grown men that don't have, uh, you know, a couple of fragrances, but you know, I only wear Ralph Lauren and I got almost all of them. If I haven't had all of them before. Scarves, mufflers, whatever you want to call them. I like the term mufflers. I usually use call it a muffler if it's this variety, what you see here, something uh, thicker. But uh, I have a few scarves, a few mufflers. Um, of course, obviously, I keep some Ivy and Trad inspired mufflers in my collection. Um, I tell you what, well, actually, that would be too easy for you guys because you guys can't read. But two of these are blue label and are more recent, and one of them is vintage, uh, and it's rugby. Pretty fairly easy to see. RLPC, that's, uh, that's a blue label piece. This piece here, rugby. Man, I love this piece. It's one of my favorite uh, mufflers. Now, of course, because of that color combination and just the overall swag of it, I don't wear it that often. Um, I do love this one, navy, and I love cable knit. So I definitely use this one to tie uh, quite a few of my ensembles together. As we skip over the flashiness here, this piece is a pretty nice piece also. Um, navy, French navy, I mean, I'm sorry, aviator navy on the outside piece with the cranberry stripe down the middle and then a uh, rugby Ralph Lauren crest on the, I mean, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry. A uh, uh, polo Ralph Lauren crest in the center. This is a rugby, navy blue and white bumblebee stripe style. And then I have a couple of more traditional scarves, a uh, couple of tartan scarves, a couple of your traditional plaid scarves. I had a few uh, linen scarves. I got rid of them. I don't. I don't have a need for them. Um, I only break scarves out when it's cold. I don't really wear scarves for decoration. I, only, I break them out when I, when I need them. So I didn't really have a need for a silk scarf or a linen scarf uh, to wear in the spring and summer. I, I don't I don't even want to come out in the summer. I hate summer. But yeah, definitely scarves are part of my collection. Um, off the top of my head, I think I have maybe 10. So I, I don't need a lot of scarves, but the ones I do have are ones that are very sentimental to me. They have a lot of value to me because they fit my my um my main style which is ivy and trad so also part of the world of ralph lauren are things that you can use to decorate the house uh i.e ralph lauren home now me being a former employee of the brand you know gives you a couple of little perks things that you could consider to be ralph lauren because they came from uh, a ralph lauren warehouse for the purpose of visual merchandising in a Ralph's, Ralph Lauren storefront. So through a purge at my former employer, uh, employees from my former store, um, I, pre I was able to collect about 20 of these, 20 polo mallets, bamboo. Some of them have the strap handle on the end, some of them don't, but you know, nice little piece for decoration. I have a huge a huge container that a, a huge open container that I keep them in downstairs for display uh, waiter one of the kind waiters at the polo bar the first time I went let me take home the uh, wine list so I have this on display I also have a couple of uh, pins from wait staff I get one or two every time I go to the polo bar and I've been four times no five times now 
So I have at least five or six pens floating around here somewhere. A few of them on display, a few of them I actually will use. Of course we have mugs for coffee, tea, and whatever else you want to drink out of. Um, I, have, I had a Rouse coffee mug, but it got broken. Um, polo bear, female, beach, cute, big pony. I ain't a fan of big pony, but hey, you know, it's Ralph Lauren, it works. Um, and then, as far as Ralph Lauren home, there's also bedding. I have uh, I have uh, a couple of Ralph Lauren pillowcases, but that's it. I do want to step my bedding up. I would like the full complement, the, the duvet, the shams, the comforters. I want to, and I and I would like to have a couple because I do like to switch out. Unlike a lot of you nasty men out there, I change my sheets once a week. I mean, if you ain't doing that, I need you to check yourself. But yeah, I would like to have a couple of full sets, uh, king size Ralph Lauren home bedding, different styles. Uh, definitely, I saw a blue and white one. It was just a simple blue and white stripe, but some of the throw pillows were navies. Man, it was, it was dope. But I have, I do have two of these that I picked up from a factory store. I thought they were really cool. Uh, cream off-white cable knit pillow with the the uh, preppy polo bear at the at the bottom left corner. I have two of these. I have this wonderful pillow that Miss Laura from Dolphin Mall was able to send to me once I I was able to order it when I worked for the company. She sent it to me in a Wonderful, timely manner and a nice little note. Thank you, Miss Laura. But uh, yeah, the this definitely fits my style with the rowing, the Griffin, and then PRL Polo Ralph Lauren. So I have this and the matching uh, throw blanket. Nice size throw, also very comfortable, very comfy and cozy. This is one of my favorite pillows. I don't even let anybody touch it, lean on it, anything. I found this on eBay. I ended up paying 50 bucks for it, and I thought that was a steal because I guarantee you this pillow was more than 50 bucks, and there was nothing wrong with it when I got it. There wasn't an odor, a stain, anything. But, uh, you know, it's got the fox hunt, fox hunt gentleman on the horse and a few hounds looking for the proverbial fox. And this is just a, it's just a dope scene here. And this Ralph Lauren, and this is one of my favorite pieces, and nobody's allowed to touch it, put their greasy hair on it, anything. I don't even sit on this. It's strictly for display. But, um, you know, as far as Ralph Lauren home and having accessories, like all of my mannequins and rigs came from a Ralph Lauren store, so I consider them Ralph Lauren. Uh, all of my artwork that's hanging uh, in this room is from Ralph Lauren, except for the Yale 1967. I actually grabbed that from a gentleman. He, he actually owned it. He was the, the one and only owner. It has holes in it from being stored. It's, it's, it's uh, damaged from, I think it's got fire damage on it, to be honest, but I, I just thought it was a beautiful piece of artwork and, and I, I paid a pretty penny for it. But other than that, everything else in here, the artwork all comes from a Ralph Lauren storefront. Uh, I have display pieces like bridles from horses that came from a Ralph Lauren storefront. I have giant trophies, smaller trophies. I, uh, I have a, 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 a wooden head for to put a hat on for display. Uh, my my um, boats, my sailboats, all of them come from a Ralph Lauren store. So for me, that's all Ralph Lauren. Um, belts, we went over hats. Um, I have golf balls and, and golfing tees that are Ralph Lauren. Some of them have the bear on it, some of them have the pony, some of them have Polo Ralph Lauren written out on it. Um, I have a lot of Ralph Lauren accessories. I, will, I love for my home to be Ralph Lauren. One of my goals is to get the it's a, it's, it's a chair, it's an antique style chair, and it has patches all over it, letterman patches all over it. Um, last I checked, that chair was 2,500 bucks. I think how it works is the chair is a Ralph Lauren chair, and then you 
you go through a uh, probably a laundry list of different patches that you can pick out and actually have put on the chair. So they put it on the chair, custom made for you, and ship it to you. Um, like I said, last I checked, that chair was two thousand dollars. It might be a little more than that, but I want that chair. Um, if you're a collector, I I personally don't feel like you have to have anything other than clothes if you're a rock and collector. However, what's it gonna hurt? You know, it, it makes you it makes your collection that much better when it's not just the clothes. Um, furniture, bedding, eating utensils, uh, tablescapes, whole tablescapes of all Ralph Lauren, plates, saucers, bowls. Why not? You collect and collect, right? And this is pretty damn good. And it's not that expensive either. I think the bottle's like $12, but it's called, it's called Choco Vine. It's a mixture of red wine and Dutch chocolate. Found this at Total Wine and More. And like I said, I think it's like $12, $13 or something like that. There's a couple of different chocolate wines in there. But this one is called Choco Vine. I haven't tried any other ones, but this one's pretty damn good. Anywho, it's another episode in the books. Today we talked about everything but clothes. So in the comment section, if I missed anything, feel free to tell me what I may have missed. It may be an interesting subject to you and me because this particular episode probably deserves a part two. I can think of three or four things off the top of my head right now that I could have easily discussed for another 10 or 15 minutes. You know, I don't try to keep y'all for so long, so, but I don't mind doing part twos when the subject matter is just that interesting and just that uh, intense as far as the different types of things we can discuss. So get in the comment section and if I miss something, i take notes and we'll get a part two popping off. Other than that, hit that like, hit that subscribe, tell a friend, we here. And remember, Artists paint pictures. Haters paint narratives. Don't be a hater. Have a good one.